And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello there. Uh, once again, please support me by purchasing my book. Which I'm spoiling by reading for you, but hopefully it's showing you that I have talent. Or a uh, possible talent. <laughs> yeah, chapter 10 still. I'm um, doing 10 minute videos or something like that. Um, yeah, please follow me on my socials. Uh, yeah, read, check out my uh, unedited work, which I soon will start be posting stuff there on Wattpad. Or I already am, depending on when you're watching this video. And when you decide, just like, oh, this seems interesting. Let's follow. Uh, time to continue. Everyone finished their food and began sipping <laughs> on their brown. They were having a good time, considering the crowd, until a young man shouted from behind Ash and grabbed Ash's fur hood to pull it down. Well, if it isn't sickly... He leaned over Ash's shoulder and breathed that s and he Ash's shoulder and with breath that stunk of brown and vomit he continued trying to hide yourself from the world he made an exaggerated look around not doing a very good job of it if you want to disappear a cave or up a mountain would be better he looked at the other others seated at the table oh are you guys taking pity on this sickly person you need to go get some sleep Peter Peter said raising himself from the table to get in a position to help ash sleep the young man stammered out the Sun hasn't even set yet the pub had come to had become silent as the conversation intensified. The partender hurried over, wringing his gnarled hands together. You cannot fight here. Please go outside. He pleaded with the young man and Ash's group. The young man had apparently built a reputation for himself around town and was flanked by a group of other mages. Some of whom, some whom Ash recalled having seen in the training camp. Ash remained seated at, as Holus, Gerd, as Old Holus and Gerd stood up to join Peter, staring down the group of of over ten. Ha! No fight in him, the young man said while looking at Ash from behind. He is far too frail. Without moving from his spot or looking behind himself, Ash said, Then why is it all you guys who are falling down? Then why is it always you guys who are falling down when we are in training? The young man's face turned red and the ground cracked due to his magic being unleashed and unguided as he moved his hands forward ash cast a shield at his back and forced it out the spell the man just cast backfired and he was again thrown to the ground by his own doing this time the other casters from ash's training group did not move because they knew what would come next but the regular troops had no idea and charged in peter and gerd stepped forward peter deflected the man's swing towards ash into the man who was charging next to him expecting this gerd had already started to swing from above to catch the falling body of the one in front of him they both stepped forward planting a kick into the fallen duo and readied themselves for the next pair to arrive. But like the casters before, the other troops did not go in to continue the fight. Leave, was all Ash said. All those within the reach 
of Gerd and Peter slowly got up, grabbed their companions, and fled the pub. Peter turned to the barkeep. We are so sorry about that. How much do you need in trade for the damage? Ash threw up his hood after the whole ordeal had had settled. The barkeep was speechless for the moment. How did you... Numbers don't equal skill, was all Ash said as he got up and began to head out. You don't have a tab this time. The man has... Tab this time. The man has destroyed a lot of other properties already. A lot of others' property already. But you guys not only did not damage anything, but knocked him to the ground. The barkeep continued talking energetically about it with the other guests as the friends made their exit. Once they set foot outside, they heard a slow clap and they turned to see, oh, and they turned to see, oh, if it isn't the one who told us about this place, Ash said in a jovial said to the jovial man from earlier in the day. He slowed his clap to a stop as he walked before Ash. I knew there was something special about you, he said in a low voice. My name is Commerce, he said in a louder, cheerful voice. I can use men like you. He leaned in once again. If you want an out of the war. Ash looked at his friends. No, no, don't answer now. Commerce said, raising one brow. Think on it. Commerce turned to leave, then stopped, turning back to Ash and his group. You all are new here, correct? Commerce asked rhetorically. I think I will be generous with you all for protecting one of my establishments. Commerce reached into his coat, pulling out a small bag that clang, clang, that clanged, that clanked, clanked, sorry, clanging to a small bag and put, and he pulled out three small metallic discs of different colors. This is how you will buy things here in the capital, he said as he showed them the three coins. They all have different value, but most of the time you will just be spending copper, he said while holding up the copper coin. The silver is worth the silver is the worth of 100 copper and the gold is worth is the worth of 100 silver just so you have a reference i can tell you this because normally the way i tell you this because normally the way merchants treat newcomers to the city is to have them build up a tab spending coin they don't have and then take more than the worth in property. Commerce shrugged. It is how business is done here. He put the coins back in the bag and pulled out 16 copper pieces. Have them handing them over to Peter. You would not be seeing your first bit of pay till after quite a while in the army. So, the city takes full advantage of that. Hopefully, this could tie you over for a bit. Commerce said with, a, with his winning smile as he turned back around and headed off. Thanks, Ash called out as a question. Thanks, Ash called out as a question. Not sure if Commerce was just messing with them or if he had just saved them from losing everything. Ash absently gripped the black stone in his sleeve as he, the thought of losing all of his possessions crossed his mind. 
they have they would have had to put up collateral for their food and drink if they had nothing to barter with in return for their meals. They all walked out. They all walked in silence toward the main gate and split up without a word. The following day was less eventful and when less eventful and when they returned to put to the pub that next evening the barkeep welcomed them in and even opened up a special table for them they ate and then walked around until after the sun had set the sunset then they decided to make their way back to the gate as they said their goodbyes they agreed that they would meet up again at the same place on their next break the few days following seemed to change for ash as the man no longer seemed to be focusing focused on getting back at him the sparring sessions went on without a fuss afterward ash would again go to wait for holus and meditate until he was through ash considered that they might be wanting to get him un uncomfortable then catch him off guard wanting to get him comfortable and then catch him off guard at some point well they can try the peace of right now is worth it ash thought and so it continued like that for most of the week until the last day of the week's training that day the man ha and his group seemed happier than they had been of late they were joking among themselves and would occasionally look over at ash and laugh ash did not think much of it and nothing unusual happened during the sparring when done, he went off to join Hollis again, but Hollis was not there. Ash wandered around, finally stopping one of the people in meditation. Hey, have you seen Hollis? Ash asked. The annoyed young man responded sharply. No, he never showed up today. Ash instantly thought of the young men of his training group joking around, and he began to fear for his friend. He ran back to the campground. He ran back to the campground and did not find Hollis there. He had not been seeing he had not been seen he had not seen him leave that morning either. Ash was growing frantic when he noticed a youthful man with a very thin frame looking at him. Do you know what happened? Do you happen to be Ash? The man asked. Yes. That's where I'm going to leave it right now. Seems like a decent cliffhanger. Uh, thank you all. I struggled with the word. Obviously. It tends to happen. I'm using my fingers now to read. It makes it go quicker. It makes me more immersed instead of me getting lost with looking at everything. Uh... Thank you all for listening, tuning in, whatever, what have you. Um, please support me any way you can. Doodles.